next I'm going to turn up the second half of the differential gear. First of all I'm going to round this off a little bit and then turn it round in the chuck so I can skim the back off, turn it down the diameter and then I'll turn it back round in the chuck to machine the proper uh, sides there between the back face and this face. So what will happen next will be that the uh, when that's on the axle this one that would be fitted on the wheel will be there and then when we machine a bevel gear they'll be in between. So let's get on. Right I've turned this down so I should turn it around in the chuck skim the back's face and then turn it down to the right diameter there. Right, so I faced off the back. I'll just turn this down the diameter and I'll probably also bore for the arbor. I'm just machining the outside diameter. Right, now I've machined the back, machined this size, what I'll do is bore through for the one inch axle ready to mount on the arbor. Just working my way up through with the different size drills. This is the drill before the reamer. Right, so I've bored the hole for the axle. Now what I'm going to do now is turn this around in the chuck again. Finish machining the uh, this part and then to length. Right, I've turned this round now so I can machine this to the right diameter and I've got to take this right back to there. It's a fair amount. That leaves me with uh, a sixteenth under one and a half inches from the back face to that face. As it's quite a bit to come off, I'm just going to part that off so I've got a little bit to take down. Right, so I've machined that to the right diameter and now I've also got the right measurement from here to the back face. What I'll do now is I'll just clean some out of here. So that's one and three sixteenths from there to the face. Right, I cleaned up in there. That's the right distance from there to there now. Now we can take it out of the chuck, put it on the arbor and carry on. Right, I've mounted that on the arbor just so that I can put the chamfer on the back edge there. Then I can turn it around and machine this side the teeth are going to be cut on. Right, that's the chamfer done on the back end, just like the first half. Now I can turn the casting round on the arbor and work on the face where the teeth are going to be cut. Right, that's the second half of the differential done. Now I can put this in the dividing head and cut the teeth on that face. 
Right, so I've got the uh, differential gear blank onto the dividing head. That's all level and that is dead center of the gear. I'll just recap on the math to find the right cutter and the right disc. Right, so to find the right cutting disc to cut the teeth, you take the cone angle of 78.5, that's what this gear is I'm cutting, and you put it there. So it's 1 over the sine of 78.5 degrees, and then multiply it by 44. So using this old book here with the sign tables in, the sign of 78.5 is 0.991. So it's 1 divided by 0.991 multiplied by 44 equals 44.39. So it's the cutting, the cutter, that will do 44 teeth, which on my set is a number three cutter. Next thing, we have to find the indexing plate to use. How many holes? So I've got three discs and they range from 15 to 20, 21 to 33, 37 to 49. My dividing head it's got a ratio of 40 to 1, so that means you've got to turn the handle 40 times to give it one full revolution. So we take that ratio there, and we put that there, and put how many teeth? So there's no 44 whole teeth uh, plate, so I've divided that by 2 which gave me 20 over 22. Well, that lower number, there's no 22 hold plate. So I've divided that again by t 2, which gave me 10 over 11. Well, there's no 11 hold plate, so I multiplied that by 3, which gave me 30 over 33, and there's a 33 hold plate plate there. Now on the disc, when you've got it on your dividing head, I'll show you in a minute, the top number is how many holes per tooth. So with the pin of your dividing head there on the first hole, which is zero, you cut that tooth and then you count 30 holes. So that's 30 out of the 33. So it goes all the way around there, 30. And then you'll put your pin in there and that will be your next gear and so on. I'll show you on the mid uh, dividing head. So there is the 33 hole disc there and my pin is there. So when I cut that tooth now, I'll be counting 30 holes, one, two, three, all the way around to 30. And then the pin of the handle will go there. And then these pieces here, you'll slide all the way around to touch the pin there. You'll cut that gear and then count 30 holes. And do the same again and then slide that round, cut that tooth and so on. So now, I've got my cutter set up here now, so we can get on and cut the teeth. And again, I'm going to do the teeth in two cuts. One at 100 foul, and then down to the final depth of 216 foul. Right, that's the first cut done. Now I'm going to rotate the blank by 30 holes. So you'll see, I've cut that one there, and then I pull the pin out, swivel the, and then put that pin in there, 
and then slide that around that gives me the next when I've cut that tooth I'll move the handle around to there and that gives me the next cut every 30 holes right I'll just get on and do all the other cuts you can see I'm cutting from the outside in I don't want to start knocking into this with the cutters right, just rotate it 30 holes Done at one five, a hundred five. Now I'll go all the way around again to the full depth of two hundred sixteen five. As I say, I'm cutting from the outside in, so I don't damage the inside spigot here. So that's the first one. I'll just carry on. Do the others. So you can see the difference. They're cut at the full depth. It's looking good. Just carry on and do the rest now. Looks good. Right, now we've cut all of teeth to the correct depth. You'll see that it's tapered more on the back end. So what we've got to do now to make the gear more usable is lower the cutter down half the cordial thickness and rotate the blank quarter of the indexing and what that will do is where this is tapered more, look here, it will just knock off a little bit off the back edge. And when we've gone all the way around, we raise the cutter back up to zero and then half the cordial thickness above. Rotate the disc to zero and then rotate it quarter of the index in the other way and then that will take off a little bit off of the other side so I'll just get that sorted out right so I've moved the cutter down half the cordial thickness and rotated the disc round quarter of the index in and I've got to go around the whole disc again now Right, now I've got to rotate it 30 holes again on the indexing plate. Right, I'll just go round the whole disc. Right, that's the last tooth on that side. Now what I have to do is move the cutter back up to zero and then half the cordial thickness up. Rotate the disc back to zero and then rotate it quarter of the index in the other way.
Right, I've moved the cutter now. Now it's going to cut on the other side of the tooth just to take a little bit more off the back. <laughs> Just go around the whole disc. Right, this is the last two. So that's that half of the differential gear finished. If you look carefully, you can see that the teeth are slightly narrower on the back edge. Now, what I've got to do is take it off the mandrel and put a key cutter through the middle. Right, I've got the key cutter guide in there. Now I've got to pump that down, push the cutter through. I'll just have to put a little bit of bar on the top now. Right, that's the first cut. Just get the, there it is. Now I've got to put another spacer in there. Right, I've got two spacers in there now. Gives me a bit deeper key in the actual pocket hole. Just put my little bit of bar in. There we are. There. Take that out. And there's the nice way there. Right, let's put it on the bench and have a look. Right, so there we've got a pair of the diff gears. These will go together like so. Right, I've put them on the mandrel, both together, just like they would be on the axle. They look quite good. In the next video, I'm going to machine up the beveled gears, there's two, so on there there'll be a beveled gear on say on the bottom and one on the top. Also I'm hoping to machine this part up, this will be bored out and machined so it fits in between. And then the two bevel gears fit in there. So it'll be one there and one there. This piece helps keep these bevel gears to the right distance apart. And then we'll have that inside there and have a good look, make sure they work. So please subscribe to my channel and join me as I build a 2 inch scale Fowler Showman's traction engine.